Last year, I said a comment that didn't age very well. 2020 looks to be one of the best years for new roller coasters across the globe. To my defense, that was before a global pandemic impacted the amusement industry. As a result, many 2020 additions, most notably all those from SeaWorld, Busch Gardens, and Six Flags, were delayed until 2021. And my plans to go overseas were understandably put on indefinite hold, which prevented me from experiencing some of those great looking coasters in Europe like Fly. But I was able to ride every major coaster that opened in the United States in 2020. And in this video, I will count down the best new coasters that open in America this year. And you know what? I'll rank every new for 2020 roller coaster I rode, so let's kick things off with number 9, Star Force Orbiter at Tom Foolery's Adventure Park at the brand new Kalahari Resort in Round Rock, Texas. This coaster is small. I mean, it's a kiddie coaster after all. But even by kiddie coaster standards, it's microscopic. Number 8, Whirlwind at Waldemere. This SBF Visa spinner is the standard figure 8 layout, which meant I got a lot of spinning, more reminiscent of a flat ride than a coaster. Number 7, Twisted Timbers at Land of Make Believe. I give this one a slight bump over Whirlwind because I find it comical this little SPF Visa spinner in New Jersey has the same name as a crazy RMC at King's Dominion. Number 6, Screamin' Centipede at Tom Foolery's Adventure Park. One of the first SPF Visa big air coasters is an interesting ride for sure. Combining SPF's usual spinning cars with a hamster wheel car. I actually think this layout worked really well for a spinner, and the bunny hill actually gives a little air time in the back. But I was most intrigued by the hamster wheel. The flipping was not as unpredictable as I expected, as it followed a familiar sequence each lap. You were right side up on the drop, you flipped fast on the bunny hill, and then you'd stall on the final turn, the latter of which was a bit uncomfortable due to how it wasn't banked at all, and you got some head banging. The concept is a unique idea though, and I really like how SPF tried to combine a thrill coaster with a family coaster, all in one package. Now moving on to the big five, Starting things off at number 5 is Texas Stingray at SeaWorld San Antonio. The newest GCI is very well paced. The ride holds its speed start to finish. The first half has some good airtime, particularly on the first drop in the very back because it's a rare straight drop from GCI. And then the turnarounds give strong pops of airtime up front. But the second half's airtime was noticeably weaker. The ride still hauled but outside of a few hills, the airtime was rather weak in the second half. However, I have to add the disclaimer that I rode this ride in abnormally cold 50 degree conditions for Texas, and the ride actually had to shut down at the end of the night due to it getting too cold. So if this is Texas Stingray's floor, I'm salivating what this coaster could do on a hot summer day. I suspect its ceiling could be as high as number 3 in this list, but I'm ranking the coaster purely off my experience. So to anyone who rode Texas Stingray over the summer and during the winter months, I'd love to know if it ran a lot faster. Number 4, Sandy's Blasting Bronco at Nickelodeon Universe. The first ever Intamin Short Loop coaster packs a mighty punch. This coaster is a modest looking top speed of just 48 miles per hour, or 77 kilometers per hour. But that launch is intense. These LSMs accelerate you at a rate in the ballpark of the launches in Takabisha or Shellraiser. And the last few LSMs are actually on the upward slope of the Immelman, so you're pummeled with positive Gs and accelerating at the same time. All three Immelmans feel distinctly different. Some offer hang time, while the second one has a borderline violent snap on the way down. But the star of the show is the backward segment thanks to that turntable. Getting to experience a backwards launch as forceful as Sandy's took my breath away, and it folded me over my seat each time. And then those elements taken in reverse were extremely disorienting, particularly that whippy second Immelman. I hope more parks add this compact coaster. Number 3, West Coast Racers at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Before rides were delayed from 2020 to 2021, Magic Mountain thought it would be cool to delay their 2019 attraction until 2020. The construction delays were a comedy of errors, but the ride itself is no joke. In fact, 
it's just downright fun. The interaction with the other train is incredible and makes the ride. All those near misses are a sight to behold. And the elements aren't too shabby either. You have decently powerful launches, some airtime, particularly the wild lateral ejector airtime in the high five, some hang time in the inversions, and some surprising positive G's in the helixes. This coaster is super rewritable too, with the large arsenal of diverse elements and the long ride time. Number 2. Candemonium at Hershey Park. The newest BM hypercoaster is definitely one of their best. Candemonium offers a sustained floater airtime we've come to expect on a BM hyper, but this one holds its speed better start to finish. Yes, there are trims that will slow you down a bit, but the airtime is still plentiful. And the big thing for me is that there isn't really a mid course break run, unless you count that little bit before the final turn. That allows you to get the familiar camelbacks in the first half like a Mako, but the coaster doesn't die in the second half. Instead, it has a signature off axis hill after the helix, a few other strong bunny hills, and that picturesque turn around the Kisses Fountain. While Skyrush is still the best hyper at Hershey for a thrill seeker such as myself, Candemonium is the perfect complement and it appears to be the clear crowd favorite. Number 1, Orion at Kings Island. After my initial rides on the newest Giga Coaster, I would have placed it below Candemonium. But when I returned to Kings Island in late summer, Orion really grew on me. I'm not sure if it was running faster, but I really enjoyed the sequence of elements more. The first drop is one of the best in the world. B&M Giga Drops have an unbelievable amount of sustained floater airtime. And while the ride doesn't hug the ground in the first half like Fury, you do still really feel the speed in the valleys, particularly when you drop off that far turnaround and hurdle over the speed hill. I also found the airtime a bit better as well. The speed hill, camelback, and off axe hill were as good as before, but the wave turn and hill into the brake run packed a stronger punch this time. And the helix felt a tad more intense as well. Orion is a ride that most people seem to have grown on with more rerides, myself included. It may not have the length of Fury, but it's a no-nonsense coaster that mixes some good airtime with elite speed. Plus, I love the whole theme and atmosphere around Orion. So those are my favorite coasters that opened in the United States in 2020. If you want more thoughts on any of the top six, I currently have separate reviews for all of them except Texas Stingray. That one will come sometime in the near future. However, there were two new for 2020 editions they actually preferred over all these coasters, including Orion. The best overall new ride in America in 2020 was Star Wars Rise of the Resistance at Disneyland. This trackless dark ride absolutely blew me away. It is the best themed experience in the entire world in my opinion. I won't spoil the queue line and pre-show, but it did feel like I was transported out of Disneyland to another planet. That's how immersive it is. And then the ride itself was even better than I imagined. The ride is an absolute spectacle with the trackless ride vehicles, the complex animatronics, giant set pieces, and music. And then there's a surprise towards the end of the ride that I don't want to spoil. I have a separate review going into more detail about this ride, but it's not just the top ride in 2020. It's a top 10 ride in the entire world. But the best overall addition in 2020 is that my home park, Canopy Lake Park, finally got season passes for the first time in their 118 year history. They were one of the largest parks in the US without them, and it pained me to work five minutes from an amusement park that didn't have season passes. While the 2020 season did not go as I expected, I still visited Canopy more than I did in any other year. While 2020 turned out differently than any of us planned, I'm just thankful I was able to stay safe at these parks because of their safety precautions, and the new rides I experienced were just gravy. Hopefully these rides will be thrilling guests for many years to come, and the parks can eventually get their return on investment on the rides when they added them. What are your favorite coasters that opened in 2020 in America? Were you able to ride any of them? Let me know what you think about any of these rides down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you gave it a like and you considered subscribing, 
because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.